Welcome back to the build series. In today's video, we're going to be building the X and Y gantries. Before we get started building, let's take a look at the design. The gantries I'm referring to are these assemblies that are moving around, the Y gantry being this large assembly that moves in the Y direction, and the X gantry is what holds the tools and obviously moves in the X direction. The Y gantry consists of a V-group aluminum extrusion beam that the X gantry rides on and connects these two sub-assemblies on either end. This front sub-assembly houses one of the Y stepper motors and the X stepper motor. The X motor works by moving a belt that is wrapped around an idle or pulley on the opposite sub-assembly and attached to either end of the X gantry. The Y motors are slightly more complicated. When they turn, they actually pull themselves and the rest of the assembly along the length of the frame. They do this by pulling on the belts that are wrapped around these two idler pulleys and fixed to either end of the frame. These idler pulleys increase the angle of contact on the belt pulley as well as guide the belts into the T-slot below the wheels. Speaking of wheels, the gantries all ride in these V-wheels whose profiles are designed to roll in the grooves of this special V-groove T-slotted aluminum extrusion that we built the frame out of. All of these blue parts are custom aluminum brackets that we'll make later, and they hold everything together with the help of some nuts and bolts. The back sub-assembly is very similar, with a few key differences. It houses a second laser mirror, which we'll talk about in a later video. It houses the other Y motor, but instead of an X motor, it houses the idler pulley that guides the belt back to the X gantry which we'll get into after we build this Y gantry assembly. I started by making all of these custom aluminum brackets. These are all made out of quarter inch 6061 T6 aluminum. After cutting everything to length on my miter saw, I began the process of marking the hole locations. I did this by carefully scoring lines with my calipers and then making indentions at all of the intersections. There are a lot of holes to drill and tap, so I went ahead and made some nice mechanical drawings for each bracket so I could keep track of everything. I then took these over to my drill press to start drilling out all the holes. I did my best to use nuts everywhere I could, but some of these holes needed to be tapped, so I went ahead and did that too. And finally I put a coat of paint on the Y gantry brackets, and then everything was ready for assembly. So here's everything we need to put together the Y gantry subassembly. We have the brackets, the Y gantry rail, stepper motors, belt pulleys, E wheels, the laser mirror idler pulleys, and lots of fasteners. I started by assembling the front sub-assembly, which went pretty smoothly. I was happy to find that all of the holes matched up like they were supposed to and everything fit perfectly. After completing the back sub-assembly, the Y gantry was ready to be joined with the frame. Thankfully it fits and rolls along the rails very smoothly. I was then able to install the lower V-wheels. Instead of spacers, these utilize these eccentric nuts, which have an offset hole so you can adjust the positioning of the wheels by turning the nuts until the wheels make firm contact with the rails.
After everything was assembled and installed, the only real issue I found was that these lower wheel bolts were interfering with the inner vertical supports. Apparently this was because the bolts were supposed to be flipped around, so it could have been an easy fix, but as I mentioned in the last video, I already didn't like these 1x1 one one columns, so I just removed them as I wasn't super worried about deflection on these Y rails for now. So with the Y gantry done, let's take a look at the X gantry. This will hold the three different tools and moves along the length of the Y gantry rail in the X direction. This movement is achieved with a belt that is attached to either side of the gantry. It's driven by the stepper motor and redirected by the idler pulley that are both attached to the Y gantry subassemblies. This allows the belt to be tucked into the T-slots on the aluminum extrusion and behind the X gantry. One of the tabs that holds the belts in place is also adjustable so that it can be easily tensioned. There are three protruding studs on the gantry plate to allow the three tools to be quickly and easily interchanged. This system can ultimately be adapted to any tool, and this modularity is where the module maker gets its name. Again, I'm starting by machining all of the bracketry out of aluminum. This time, the only part I need to make is this X gantry carriage plate. And here's all the parts for the X gantry, not including any of the tools in their parts. We have our carriage plate, the studs, which are just bolts screwed in and countersunk from the back, the V wheels and their hardware, and the belt tensioning hardware. So with everything rolling around properly, we can finally install the belts. For the Y belts, I 3D printed these simple belt tensioners. These can be adjusted by pulling them and tightening them down. And the belts are secured with zip ties, which so far actually works fine. Routing the belt around the pulleys was a little tricky, but once I got it, I attached the other end and it ended up working really well. The X-Belt was even easier to install and worked out just as well. And with that, the gantries are finished, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Next time we'll be getting into the electronics and finally getting a machine to move on its own. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.